Po' Boys, and in this episode, we are going to work on Scoot, work on Yeet, and get stuff ready and prepared for big plans coming up that y'all still have to subscribe for because they're coming up here within the next few videos. All right, guys, so we haven't ridden Scoot in a little bit, and y'all have been asking where it's been, but it's been sitting right here, just doing nothing. The reason why it's been sitting here doing nothing is because it's been dead. The alternator went out in the car, and the battery went in the car, which if you saw in the last part of the shop reveal, the battery was dying. The lights were actually turning off and extremely dim, so I had lights, and then they literally turned off by the time I got to the shop. So this thing has been completely dead. So I needed something to help me get the car started. So the folks at AutoWit went ahead and sent us a care package. And that is this super capacitor jump starter. And basically what it is, is not a battery. This isn't like a power bank or anything like that. It's a giant capacitor. So what this does is take the charge from the low voltage that it already has in your car, charges up the capacitor and the capacitor can take that energy, save it up and then use it one time really fast, send all of that energy and voltage to your starter. Let's go ahead and test it and see if it works. Oh, this thing is dead dead. This thing is extremely dead. The oil light turns on, bro. <laughs> That's it, the oil light turns on. And it's not even, barely even doing anything. I don't works, know, this is very dead. I, if it works, like I will actually be very surprised. Time to unbox this guy. Pretty nice packaging. Got a lot of cool stuff on there. 15.5 volts, 800 amps, negative 40 degrees Celsius to 70 degrees Celsius. So you could use this in really cold temperatures. Input is 12 or six or five volt. Whoa, really? If you do 12 volt, it's three minutes. Six volt is 20 minutes and five volt is 30 minutes. That's really cool that you can do that. Oh, cool, it comes in a nice little case. So this is the super capacitor right here. It's actually a pretty solid unit right here. Nice quality, you can see a little display right here. There's the side for all the plugins right here. And it looks like here's going to be power cables I'm gonna be using. So if what I'm reading is correct, what I think that you do is you plug this in and you don't use a battery to charge this thing. You don't have to charge this capacitor. All you do is take it, put positive on positive, negative on negative, it already beeped at us. Now it's talking to us. So the display is just turned on. And now it should be charging up the capacitor, which should take about three minutes or so. It's already charging up volts. It's at 5.3 right now, and it's at 4%. So that's probably going to get a little bit bigger as we go. It's already moving up percentage and hopefully charges up this capacitor. So when it gets to 100%, we're going to go ahead and try and start the car and see if this capacitor has enough voltage in it from that battery that it took out, charging up the capacitor and see if that capacitor can fire the starter fast enough to actually get this car to bust off. I'm really excited to see it. All right, so we want to go ahead and test the capacitor. I'm sorry, we went ahead and just got dinner and it actually got dark a lot faster than I was anticipating. So I'm going to go ahead and put this thing to use and let's go ahead and figure out how to do it obviously negative will go to negative and positive will go to positive and we can watch it go and it says that it's charging right there and it's just going up percentage it's at 47 percent right now and we're waiting until it gets to 100 and if it starts then it works and if it doesn't start then it doesn't work so i we'll have to find out all right so it says power on we're gonna go ahead and power it on Hey. No way! Dude, what? Let's go. It started right up. Scoot's back alive. I low-key forgot about this thing. She's back now. This thing actually worked really well. I I would recommend this. Product link is in the description down below. It works for me. It actually worked a lot better than I can say. The product speaks for itself. If you want to get one for yourself, use the product code posted right here. And you can get this thing for a discounted price. It's so freaking cool. This thing sounds so good. We have a steering shaft with that right there and that right there, and we need to take that and fix what it. What I have is the steering shaft's actually inside the car. Let me show y'all the issue that I'm actually facing because this is YouTube and I have to show y'all what I'm doing. I keep forgetting that I'm a YouTuber sometimes and I'm like, oh, maybe I shouldn't show them, but I'm like, oh wait, I forgot the people like that. That piece goes there and this piece goes here. So, all right guys, so if you see right there inside the chop saw right here, we have that U-joint and we're going to be cutting it right here so we can have a flat edge to weld this piece onto right here. We're gonna go ahead and weld that right there and there should be enough steering clearance, but First off, we have to cut this and prep it for welding. Then we have to get this prepped for welding. So now we have a piece that we can go ahead and get this, this piece right here ready to mate to. I know it looks really bad, but this is me looking up everything that I possibly could have done to this. This is the best I could figure out with the stock steering shaft. I'm going to weld this to that. And realistically, all I need to do is just cut down a little bit more metal, probably with a flap wheel, get it all flat, ready to weld, 
and then get this flat ready to weld and I'm going to put a bead in between here just like that and we will have two u-joints inside our steering shaft it'll also move the steering shaft out of the way of the headers just a little bit which realistically with heat I'm not too worried about because I want to put either way we're gonna do it <laughs> Alright guys, so this right here is a TIG torch that has had some better days if you can see. This is a regular porcelain cup right here and that comes out and then there's the gas right there. Oh, focus. There's where the gas comes out and there is the tungsten right there. So we'll go ahead and loosen the tungsten. Pull that guy out. Let's take this guy apart, put a gas lens on it so that way we'll get some better welds and we can go through a lot less gas because I went through a whole entire bottle of gas welding Caleb's exhaust. So let's try and get that a little more efficient because those things are kind of expensive. I bought this glass cup kit, which is a gas lens kit, which was $20 off of Amazon. And I'm gonna go ahead and test it out compared to one of the more expensive kits. I got this for free off of some gift card points that I had on Amazon. There's a metal mesh piece that goes inside your cup. There's an O-ring that goes on top of this guy right here to keep your cup on. And there's two actual gas lenses right here. And here is the cup and then the piece that sits against the cup. It's already almost all the way apart. So we have an open TIG gun that pretty much just does nothing right now. All right, got the new piece on. All right, well, there's that. I gotta put one of these green O-rings on. All right, there's two right there. Here's a cup, there that is. Now the glass piece is on both O-rings. Now we have one daggum TIG cup right here, Junior. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and take this tungsten grinder right here and grind my tungsten down, move all this stuff out the way. Oh, that's how sharp that is. So now, that goes in here, and all you gotta do now is decide which one you need. That's gonna be too long, and that's gonna be just right. I accidentally forgot to put that piece in, it fell out. All right, so. Here is my gas lens kit, and you can see how sharp the TIG is, and that is gonna do some freaking good welding right there. So we finna do it to him on this. No gas. That guy's welded now. So it is that time to test fit and see if what we made will fit. Looks like we're about to have steering on this thing. Me and Sean are gonna go to lunch and uh, we're gonna go to In-N-Out. In-N-Out's in Dallas, Texas. I like your house, dude. <laughs> Look at the f and goose. Look at the goose. You know you can go to the buy, go to the farmers market and buy those. About just oh, it almost did get bought. Oh. Holy <laughs> natural selection's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they repainted that Taco Bell. I got a chicken egg roll. Man breaks are in this building. Check out that ladder. I'm really trying to go up that yeah, one day. I'm really trying. This place is very industrial. Oh, yeah. Ooh, people are about to start going fast in stick shift cars here. And it starts with that right there. Pulling up to monster clutches. Sean's got to drop off his triple disc right here. So me and Sean stopped by Summit Racing and we got stopped by some fans that saw us. What's up, man? We're like, hey, might as well go say hi. It looks like he did some burnouts for Nick. Dude, heck yes. Dude, that is awesome. We spinning all the way down, and the guy had talked to them, so I had permission to do it. Dude, it was yeah. falling. Dude, heck yeah. Well, thank y'all very much. We're gonna go inside. Go check out Summit for the first time. Bro. Hey, look. This is, hey, you need some headlights for your, for your, uh, for your... Oh my gosh, those are literally headlights. Headlights for my truck and taillights for my truck right here. Yep, just like that. That's great, just like that. Dude, I did not know that Summit had so much stuff. I really did not know this. I'm actually shook right now. Dude, just shifters literally out the wazoo. Hey, this is the oh, long, you're getting, you're getting the, 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 the shorter long. version of this. Yeah. Ooh, that's what I need to put on Yeet right there. Hey, yeah, those are safe. Those are specialties. Oh, yes. Those boys are deep. Dude, I need to get me some of these here welds, baby. <laughs> Follow me to the summit store. Hey, you trying to get some 
head they said and bad trick flow well, right what here really gets them is when you hit them with that that twirling head that, that it really gets them pistons rods timing covers cam valve train oil cup lifters push rods rockers really all the above i do need to see those hey these are nice fans too oh and oil coolers Mm -hmm. This is 121 champs with a fan on it. See, after you get that head twirl, you get that blow. Okay, so everything you see here, I need. I'm not carbureting my car, but that's what I'm putting on the drift car is a Terminator. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be a lot easier than putting it on anything else, but a Terminator is the move. Wait, Wait for it. it. Hey. Right. Look who happens to be freaking there. <laughs> next shift innovations. Y'all got him a hat, matches his shirt and everything. Hell yeah. I had to pick out the perfect one. I can't let my boy walk out without a camo hat. Yeah. Hey, now he's not even going to be seen. Thank you. Can I take And here's your receipt. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Hold on. Let me see, let me see that boot. Let me see that boot. Oh, yes. <laughs> Leaving your mark, bro. Yes. Thank y'all so much. Sean's in the hot seat. Alright, we got to go. All right, Sean, I'm about to give you some trivia. And this is gonna be something that's really, really, really just interesting. You're gonna have to tell me. And there's only one reason I say this like this is because you know exactly what it is if you know what this engine is. But if you don't know what the engine is and you see this intake, then you're gonna be completely clueless. What is this for? Uh, that is to carburate a 2JZ. I don't know what I'm really looking at. <laughs> a slant six is literally this, the intake and everything, like the whole engine. Is like an inline six, but instead of being an inline six, it's a slant six, and really? it's slanted. And your intake and your exhaust goes in both one uh, side. Well, that explains it, but I still think you could probably carburate a 2JZ with that thing. All right, guys, so Sean got his parts, and we are on our way out of Summit, which... Do we have to go, Dad? I know. I really yeah. don't want to go. Yeah, can we There's stay? literally a top fuel dragster on the roof. We're going to make our way back to In-N-Out, actually, so we're going to take advantage of being in Dallas and go to In-N-Out. Sean, what used to be there back in the day? You know it. Foundation. Have you never seen those mounts, bro? The giant Texas star that was here, and they had to take it away because too many people were driving off of the road, getting stuck, and also pulling back onto the highway right here and running into stuff because it was a giant Texas flag that everyone wanted to take a picture of on that hill. What? I'm just trying to go to In-N-Out. Sean typed in In-N-Out, and this happens to be the same exact hotel that we stopped at the Money Shift and did the Money Shift event at. This is the same exact hotel. Why did it take us here uh, instead of... That's okay. really weird. Now it's saying we're two miles away. My GPS is being a Karen right now. Shut up, Karen, and take me to In-N-Out! Facts. We're gonna get our freaking lunch. That's the only reason we came to Dallas. Our lunch, it's, getting, it's going dark. There it is. Look at him go. Damn. Look at him go in there. In and out and it up. Hey, this is actually very pristinely placed. Not gonna lie. Looks good. Mine's <laughs> pretty damn good. Don't need to take yourselves to in and out. Okay, so we have the strange quick disconnect steering right here, which if you can see on the other side actually works. We have that all set up. I also have the dash bolted in. We can see the steering shaft. Yeah, so the steering shaft came out nice. So I ended up welding this piece directly to that piece. The cut looks pretty clean and also all the welds seem to lay down extremely nice and it's a very firm and hard piece and it's all mild steel stuff. So it should be pretty good adhered to that. And I don't think there should be any problems with that in the future. I also drilled out a hole and then added two bolts to it just to make sure that that bolt's never coming out to make sure that the steering shaft works on this side. If you spin it, you can see that the whole thing turns. And then if you go the other way, the whole thing turns the other way. And that is pretty much what all we've wanted for this car. So now we have steering for it. We're gonna go ahead and get some knuckles and get this car rolling on its own feet again. Sorry that this thing has literally became a back burner project, but reality's hitting and that's to the drift car, but we can't see that because that is going to be on the next video, which is why y'all guys need to subscribe. And thank you very much for watching this video. Have a great one. Remember to freaking send it. Be great.